This is a performance SUV, but not as we know it. If you couldn't tell, and it is hard to tell from most angles, this is the Tesla Model Y Performance. And it should be easy to make a performance SUV, shouldn't it? You just up the power of the motors and give it a high enough output battery and call it a day. And the answer is, well, yes, that's most of it, but there's actually quite a lot more going on with this car under the skin. The question is, is it worth the significant amount of extra money over a base Model Y? That's what we're gonna find out. And this is not a cheap Tesla. To give you an idea, the base Model Y costs around $70,000, but this performance version costs over $100,000 once you add on-road costs. And that's because it's so expensive, it no longer attracts EV discounts. Instead, it adds luxury car tax, so the price just keeps heading in the wrong direction. And on top of that, it doesn't really look different from the base car from the outside, nor does it feel different from the inside. From the outside, you'll notice the enormous 21-inch wheels with performance tires. If you look closely, you might notice the little carbon fiber lip spoiler. And if you look even more closely, you might notice that it's slightly lowered compared to the standard Model Y. Inside though, the standard stuff applies. Vegan leather trim, a big 15-inch all-encompassing tablet screen with integrated nav and always online services, dual wireless chargers, panoramic glass roof. It's all very slick and modern, but there's no Apple CarPlay. Tesla expects you to use inbuilt versions of all your favorite apps. The real sell for me though, and for a lot of other buyers, will be the software. As though to prove Tesla is more a software company than a car company, it's got by far the best software in the car, but it's also got the best phone app. For a deeper dive on all the price and features for the Model Y range, check out our full reviews over at carsguide.com.au. And it's true, it might disappoint some buyers that the Tesla Model Y performance doesn't set itself apart with different bumpers or a big wing or anything like that. But it does stick to Tesla's minimalist design aesthetic. Like many models of smartphone, the changes here aren't meant to be seen, just felt. Those Uber turbine wheels are of course a highlight, although they are the only option on the performance, so too bad if you don't like matte black. On the inside, there are no surprises if you've seen or sat in a Model 3 or a Model Y before. There's the same minimalist aesthetic taken to a fault. I feel like I'm sitting in a rolling Apple store with the big floating tablet screen and lack of decoration. Although I like that our test car has the wood look trim instead of the NAF white plastic option, which only serves to cheapen the space. The minimalism in here should help it age pretty well, I would have thought. But as I usually complain about with these Tesla designs, there's no dash cluster or even a head up display which feels like a bit of a strike against the practicality. You'll have to look over to the center screen to keep tabs on core functions of the car, like how fast you're going. On the topic of practicality, the Model Y feels much more expansive than the Model 3. Everything in here feels bigger and further away, even though the design isn't that different. But this minimalist sort of aesthetic does leave room for some nice big door pockets for your bottles, and some expansive storage down in this center console, which is truly enormous because of that flat floor design. It's premium, but not too premium, with a few little tells like this synthetic leather seat trim. It looks nice and it's pretty comfortable, but I'm just not sure how well it's going to age. Now, if you've watched any of my other Tesla reviews before, you'll know that we're not huge fans of this center screen. It's such a shame to complain about it though, because it does look beautiful. It really works with this design and it really does have the best software in the business. It's super smooth and it's backed by great hardware too. All the transitions and the screens are really fast and it really suits the car. It is just a shame that a lot of these little touch areas are a little bit hard to press and concentrate on the road while you're on the go. And you do have to control everything through the touchscreen as well. It's not just the navigation, it's the air conditioning, it's the radio system, it's all the little things that you'll need to use to operate the car's functions. That's just a little bit of a shame. The back seat is such a big win in the Model Y. It's still got that flat floor from the Model 3, but I feel like I sit a lot lower and hence have a lot more headroom too. And that's a real win for this car over its smaller sibling. Look at the amount of legroom I've got. There's just heaps in here. There's controllable air vents and there's two USB-C ports as well. The seat trim continues and of course, you've got a big bottle holder in the door and two more in this little drop-down armrest as well. 
that's a nice touch, but there is one thing missing that I'd like to see, and that's a full-size power outlet. There's a lot of EVs that are starting to include these either under the seat here on the back of the center console. It's just one thing that the Tesla's missing. In fact, the Model Y is missing V2L, that's the ability to power external devices via the charging port altogether. It's possibly the only key EV spec item the Tesla range is missing right now, handing a small advantage to its Korean rivals like the Kia EV6 or Hyundai Ioniq 5. The boot is massive. It has 854 litres of space, which is heaps for a midsize SUV, with abundant underfloor storage for things like charging cables and a frunk too. Again, Tesla is famously a bit shy about sharing hard power and torque specs for any of its models, simply relying on the 0 to 100 km an hour sprint time, which in the case of this one is a very trim 3.7 seconds. Unsurprisingly though, the hardware here is the same as the Model 3 performance, so expect similar thrills if a little blunted by the extra weight of the Model Y's body. The performance is also upgraded to all-wheel drive with a motor on the front axle and has improved lower suspension as well as bigger performance brakes. So first things first, I would like to apologize if you're not a Musk fan because the Model Y is seriously impressive to drive, especially in this performance grade. It's just blindingly fast. Yes, it says 3.7 seconds, which compared to some EVs doesn't sound ridiculously fast, but it is ridiculously fast. Honestly, anything below five seconds is already ridiculously fast and the number sort of becomes meaningless below that. This car is fast enough to turn your groceries into a paste. But there's more going on underneath as well. Not only do you get a lower ride height and seriously large brakes to deal with this car's extra bulk and performance, but you also get a new ride. In fact, Tesla says that the ride in the performance is a new version of the suspension, which is both better for handling the serious performance that this car is capable of, but also it's more comfortable. And it really shows too. Compared to the base model I drove just a few months ago, it seems like the sharp edge has come off the ride of this car. It doesn't feel as brittle or as brutal when you're slamming over bumps as that base car did when it first launched. It's something that both the Model Y and the Model 3 have needed for a while. And it's great to see it included here, even with these giant 21 inch wheels. The handling in this car is seriously out of this world as well. Even though it's enormously heavy, it's got a kind of torque vectoring technology, which means it can send the correct amount of torque to any of its four wheels at any given time and adjust it on the fly. This means when you're trying to make this car misbehave, it will adjust things on the go. It feels really surreal when you throw it into a corner and you can feel the computers pulling the car straight and on the fly correcting understeer or oversteer as the car sees fit. It's almost too good. It's almost clinical in the way that it attacks the road. And I think in some ways, that's gonna disappoint some enthusiasts. The computerization doesn't stop there. You get three adjustable kind of regen modes. You get a creep mode, a roll mode, or a full stop mode. And the full stop mode is the one which will max out your regen and bring this car to a full halt, allowing you to drive it like a single pedal vehicle. Then you get three adjustable steering modes as well. There's like a chill mode, which makes it nice and light. I like that one the most. There's a standard mode and there's a sport mode, which seems to make it just too heavy. The one thing about the steering I will say though, is it's a little weird. There is a little bit of feedback coming back through it, but each of these modes is so heavily computer assisted that it doesn't quite feel real. While it's impressive that Tesla has made the ride more compliant from both a performance point of view and from a comfort point of view, it is still a little bit busy. There's just a lot going on. The car jiggles back and forth constantly, even on small bumps. And that just goes to show how firm it is. And also the low profile tires, they're probably not helping either. Battery size, well, officially we don't know that either but it is significantly larger than the one in the standard Model Y, upping range from 455 kilometers to 514 kilometers. And that's even accounting for the higher performance and additional load required for this car's all-wheel drive system. Charging is a good story as well, with the Model Y hitting a peak of 250 kilowatts on a compatible supercharger, meaning you can charge up to a high battery percentage in around half an hour. This places the Model Y up there amongst the fastest charging EVs in our market. 
On the topic of superchargers, while Tesla has plans to unlock its network to EVs from other brands, it hasn't yet, meaning its cars can make use of the most extensive charging network in Australia. On a slower AC charger, the Model Y performance hits a peak of 11 kilowatts, which is welcome. It should add around 75 kilometers of range every hour it sits on one of these slow charging units, which is good for longer stays at the shops. Now, when it comes to awarding points for safety, for me, it should be really difficult for a car to get a really good score because nowadays cars have so much safety equipment, you really have to push the boundaries and do something new. But thankfully, I think that's something that these Teslas actually do really well. They've got an unprecedented number of sensors and cameras, and I think that's best explained through the radar camera that this car has on its main screen. It's always showing you all the lane features and cars and signposts that it's picking up as it drives past. And it really gives you confidence that the car's built a picture of the world around it and knows where potential hazards are. Teslas tend to rank very highly when it comes to ANCAP safety ratings too, and both the Model Y variants have scored a maximum rating to the 2022 standard. It scored particularly highly for adult occupant protection and safety assist systems. Check out our full written review at carsguide.com.au for more info here. One thing I would say though, is it's probably not worth splashing out for the full self-driving option. It costs over $10,000 and is questionably legal to use, so what's the point? What's it like to own a Tesla? Well, that's another one of these unknown questions, isn't it? The numbers don't look too good though. This car only comes with a four year warranty. This is one of the shortest new car warranties in the mainstream space and is limited to just 80,000 kilometers. However, a separate warranty covers the high voltage battery and drive components for eight years or 160,000 kilometers. Tesla guarantees there will be 70% of the car's original battery capacity available at that time. Teslas have condition-based servicing, so the car or the app will tell you when it's time to visit a workshop. One thing's for sure, this is a performance car, but not as we traditionally understand it. This version of the Model Y really is the ultimate gadget on four wheels. It's ridiculously fast, it's got superb handling, and most importantly, it's got some of the best software in the business. It even comes in a slight cheaper than a lot of its European EV rivals. So on that front alone, it's not even that bad value. The question is whether every enthusiast will be sold. Because the thing is, this car is too good. It's too computer assisted, it's too fast, it's too good at attacking the road. And for that reason alone, I don't think every enthusiast is gonna be sold.